With YouTube remarketing lists, you can create audiences off of users who interacted with your videos or channels in a variety of ways. Now, the best part about this is that YouTube has a lot of very specific targeting options that we don't get with other campaigns within Google Ads. So these can be some really good audiences to create some next step marketing tactics to get that user to eventually convert. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the types of YouTube user audiences that you can create within Google ads. I'm going to show you what networks can use YouTube user audiences because it's not available in every single one. And then I'm going to go over some strategies of how your audience settings can really dictate what message you want to use in front of users when using YouTube user audiences. Starting off, I'm in the main Google Ads interface, and whenever we talk about creating audiences within the platform, we need to head to the Audience Manager. And to find that, go to the top navigation and click on Tools and Settings. In the second column, we'll see Shared Library, and then we see Audience Manager. To start creating new audiences, we need to click on this blue circle button right here. And the third option down, we see the category of YouTube users. This is the only place to go to create audiences from any user who has interacted with your video in a variety of ways. The list member section is going to be the main chunk of this video, but I'm going to skip that really quick and we're going to go down to YouTube channel. I want to talk about this area first because in order to create any YouTube users audience in Google ads, you have to have your YouTube channel linked with Google ads. So in order to do this, we'll go up to tools and settings again, and here we see linked accounts. If you scroll down a little bit, you will see the option for YouTube. So you can click on details. Obviously we already have our channel linked, but let's say we wanted to link another channel or we're beginning to link our channel for the first time. If we click on the blue plus button again, here is where you need to paste the link of the YouTube channel you want to link to. I'm going to cancel that and let's pretend to link to my personal one instead. And this will be the same pop-up you would see if you were pasting in a YouTube channel URL. So you can select if you own the channel or somebody else owns the channel. If you own the channel, it'll be pretty easy. You'll get step-by-step -step instructions of how to just go back into your YouTube channel and link everything together. If someone else owns the channel, the admin on the YouTube channel will get a notification if they want to accept this request to link the accounts. After that is done, you will see the channel show up right here. Once you see the status confirming that is linked, and then we can go back and start creating our first YouTube user audiences. So let's jump back into Audience Manager. So our YouTube channel is linked. So now the most important part is going to be your list members. And I'm going to go through every single one of these options. The first and the default option is I can create an audience off of users who viewed any video from a channel. And since I only have one channel linked to this account, it's just going to use that channel. We do have the option to edit it. If you have multiple channels linked to your account, you'll be able to swap out and create an audience for each one. So the next option can be choosing to create an audience of users who viewed specific videos. So Michelle and I have a lot of videos that are broken out by each specific paid media channel. And for whatever reason, let's say we wanted to remarket to users who just watched our LinkedIn videos. They may want to see our new LinkedIn video or whatever blog or whatever we have in mind. Just making something up here. I can search just for my LinkedIn videos and then add however many I want that are applicable to the audience I have in mind. For full clarification, it's going to be anyone who has watched these videos, no matter how they got to that main video watch page. I'm going to clear this out and then let's move on to the third option. Now this one looks pretty familiar, except there's one little qualifier to the title. You can create a YouTube user audience based off anyone who's viewed any video as an ad from your YouTube channel. So this is a good way to think of user intent and what type of creative you are showing to users specifically as an ad. You may have some longer evergreen organic content that gets a ton of organic viewers. And then you might have some promo, you know, 30 second style, 15 second style videos, possibly that are unlisted and people can't find them organically, but most likely the user intent and the message that you're showing those users with ads is going to be different than that longer organic content. And most likely that's going to impact your marketing strategy and what you want to show that user next or how you market to those users. Very common in ad sequencing. And we have a video with that right here. So if you want to separate out users who viewed any of your videos as an ad, you do have that option. And you can probably guess what the fourth option is for a YouTube user list. It's going to be people who viewed certain videos as ads. And when you can select your videos, YouTube will still show you all the videos within your campaign. They're not going to show you just the ones that you've run as ads. This is because you can proactively create this audience in case you run these videos as ads in the future. And just like I showed you with the LinkedIn example, you can search for specific videos, add them to the mix. And if you're running ads on these three specific videos, I'm going to create an audience off of users who saw these three videos as an ad clearing out. Once again, I'm going to jump around a little bit to visited a channel page, another self-explanatory YouTube user audience. Anyone who just visits your YouTube channel page, also depending on which YouTube channel 
channels you have linked to your Google Ads account. And here we are in the Paid Media Pros channel page. Someone just visiting this page can be bucketed in that visit channel audience because there are a few things that users can do and not actually watch videos. And they can explore everything that we have here. They can check out your about section. If you find out a lot of people are visiting your page and then going through some of your social links, it is some sort of interaction. In my opinion, the visiting channel page YouTube user audience is the most high level YouTube user audience. I'd rather focus on a more engaged user like someone watching a video or a lot of the earned action audiences which we're just about to get into. And to talk about these more specific audiences and the remaining ones that we have left to create an audience manager, I'm going to hop into a specific video. When someone lands on a video watch page, whether it's organic or through an ad, there are a variety of actions a users can do besides just watching your video. Let me scroll down a little bit. And here we see users have the option to like or dislike your video. If users click on the share button, they can share it through a variety of other channels or possibly even embed it on their own website if the video creator allows it. If a user clicks the save option, they can save it to one of their playlists that they have created on their own YouTube account. Another chance for the video creator to share the reach of the video content they're adding to YouTube. And if users want to, we can see right here, users can add comments to a YouTube video. This is another option for the video creator. We do have the option to turn off comments for specific videos if we want to. But if you leave it on, it's another way for a user to engage with your brand. And why is all this important? Because just besides video views, all those actions I just mentioned can be created as audiences within the audience manager tool. And one way that we've really found that can be helpful for boosting these types of engagement actions, if you don't have a lot of organic views, is to run TrueView discovery ads. And I've created another video off of that campaign type, which you can watch right here. Because TrueView discovery ads send users to the video watch page. It's not an in-stream ad, which people think of mostly with YouTube advertising. So let me hop back in the audience manager and I have the drop down open but the first one we see with more action based type audiences is subscribe to a channel depending on how much engagement you get with your videos whether it's organic or an ad in my head I'm thinking someone who's subscribed to my channel who wants to see more content is going to be a much more valuable user than someone who just watches the video and that's especially true if you're running videos as ads because everyone who sees your ad might not be interested in what you're showing but someone who wants to see more content to me that's a honed in user let's go up and switch this one we have liked any video from a channel it's collectively using all your likes together. We don't get the option to say if they only liked specific videos. Another option, added any video from a channel to a playlist. And then the final audience, anyone who shared any video from a channel. If you are creating really engaging content and people wanna share it, whether it's a playlist, they're sharing it via their other social channels, they're adding your YouTube videos to their blogs or to their website, you have a good strategy in place to engage with users who are commenting so you're building more interactions, encouraging that type of community building that can really build a nice audience, you can have a great variety of YouTube user audiences to choose from for your remarketing campaigns. And depending on your sales cycle or potentially the volume of users you can get per audience type, you can choose the member duration of that audience. And as you can see in the highlighted sentence right here, you can keep that audience as large as 540 days. And the option I always recommend doing, unless it's some sort of brand new campaign or brand new video you want to start from scratch, you can choose to pre-fill that list with users who matched your rules within the past 30 days or choose to start brand new. So those are the types of YouTube user audiences we can create within Google Ads but how can we use these audiences? I can explain that further, but let's hop back into the main audience manager interface. And this is the Paid Media Pros account where we do some fun stuff with our videos. We just use this account for the sake of our demos, but most likely in your Google Ads account, you have a variety of remarketing lists already. You have your website visitor audiences, your customer match audiences, possibly your app interaction audiences. They're all gonna show up on this main page. What you can do if you just wanna look at YouTube user audiences is go to filter. I already have one saved for YouTube users, but if you're brand new, you need to select type. And there we see the option for just YouTube users. Whether you're filtering by type or not, you're still gonna be able to see which audience are currently in use in any campaigns and then the audiences that aren't attached to any campaigns. Now when we talk about how can we use these audiences, the four columns on the right are going to show you where we can use remarketing audiences within Google Ads. YouTube user audiences can be used for search. They can be used on YouTube. YouTube user audiences can also be used for Gmail campaigns, but then we can no longer use YouTube user audiences for regular display or remarketing display campaigns. We used to be able to and in some accounts that I manage, 
just due to how large that audience size is, the audience is still there, but it's not adding any additional cookies. So we're still milking it for all we can, but we know it's eventually gonna go away. Now what Google will do every time you create an audience is that they will also create a similar audience from the root audience. So we do see in the not in use portion of the screen, there are a few similar audiences based on my YouTube audiences. And if you're using similar audiences, those are allowed to be used for regular display campaigns. I say regular because Gmail is technically a display campaign, but Gmail can use all audience types. So now we know we really can't use display. So I want to focus just on search, YouTube, and Gmail networks. And this is where that audience duration that you can choose when creating your audience can really come into play. Because yes, a really specific action like adding your video to a playlist can be very valuable, but it's nowhere near as common as someone just watching your video on your channel. So the audience size for some of those really deeper engagement ones are most likely going to be pretty small compared to your view audiences. And that's important because if you want to do any remarketing on search, RLSA, remarketing list for search ads, it's all the same thing, whatever you want to call it, your search network audience has to have a minimum of 1,000 active users within the past 30 days. That same rule is also for YouTube. If you want to use any of your audiences on YouTube, no matter what type of audience it is, you also have to have a minimum of 1,000 active users within the past 30 days. For Gmail, your YouTube user audience can be 100 active users within the past 30 days. So display in Gmail, again, 100 users in the past 30 days compared to 1,000 for search in YouTube. From my experience, it is pretty easy to get 1,000 views and build that audience. It's a lot harder to get some of those deeper engagement audiences that allow you to grow these remarketing audiences to use for any next step tactics. So now what are some ways that we can use YouTube user audiences? What are some ideas that I could give you of how we can use YouTube user audiences to keep guiding that user to an eventual conversion if they don't convert directly from your YouTube videos? Now, one of them I already kind of talked about, and that is if users watch specific videos. If you have videos on your site or you use specific videos as ads and that video creative speaks about a specific product or service, you can lump those video views within an audience. Look at the Paid Media Pros channel for an example. I can lump all my LinkedIn videos within one audience, and I can continue to add new videos to that audience for every new LinkedIn video that either I or Michelle will create. And as that audience keeps building, we're building an audience of users who are interested in LinkedIn videos. We can use that audience to promote any new LinkedIn video we create, knowing that that user is probably gonna be more engaged, more likely to watch that video to completion than possibly any other audience. Because people who've already engaged with our videos, especially on a specific topic, they're gonna be more relevant for us and we're gonna have a better chance to keep growing that brand and keep those users coming back engaged. That's just one strategy. From the search perspective, this has been my favorite strategy of how we can use YouTube videos within our RLSA campaigns. Our goal with advertising is to make a connection with that user, have a sense of familiarity so they feel more comfortable interacting with our ads and performing the action that we want that user to take. So depending on what YouTube user audience you wanna create, and if you have enough users to add that audience to your campaign or ad group, you can change the message and say, hey, you've seen the video, now try our CRM yourself. It's still a way for us to connect with the user. We're not being overly aggressive, but we're still giving that polite little nudge to say like, hey, you've already seen the good things that our CRM could do. Try it for free or whatever's applicable. We have used these audiences when we're using the targeting audience setting. So we know users who have only watched our videos will see this specific headline. Now let me go through one example, and yes, I use Star Wars examples a ton. I'm not gonna apologize, and I'm not gonna stop. And no, I don't work for Funko, I just love all their stuff. So here's one video that at the time of this recording is the featured video on the Funko YouTube channel, so a lot of people are watching it. But in this video, not only are we watching it a decent, I'm already a minute into it, we see Ray, BB-8, Dio, Old Lando. Okay, it's a fun, entertaining video. Really good for branding and announcing possibly these new products. So what could they possibly do with this potentially with a Gmail campaign? I've gone into Google Ads, and here's just a quick example of what you could do to remarket to these users. Remember, we only need 100 active users within the past 30 days. With a Gmail ad, I can attach a video and show them the same video that they watched on my channel. And then what do we see? I can add cataloged images and products. There's Old Lando, there's Ray, there's Dio. I did add a BB-8 one, but it's only showing three at a time, and those three can rotate. So not only am I showing the initial branding that a user sees, again, to build that familiarity and connection, 
but then I'm also sending them possibly to those product pages where they can buy the pops or the products that they saw in that initial video. This can work in anything even besides e-com. We've also done this with a lot of B2B lead gen services. It really comes down to what original video content you have on your channel or what you used as ads. If you have more demo type videos, whether it's home improvement or you're showing recipes, what products did you use in those demos or recipes? And can you try to sell those users later on? And that's, I've really grown to love Gmail because it can really allow us to really promote those products and services a lot easier than we can with some typical display campaigns. And if you want to learn more about Gmail ads, we have a demo walking through all of that right here. And there's one more thing I want to talk about on how we can really see the value of using YouTube remarketing lists within your search campaigns. When I went over that text ad example, I talked about targeting options with your audience. That means only users who are within this YouTube user audience will see that specific ad. But you can also add observation audiences to all your search campaigns. Now targeting and observation audiences have to live separately. So for any of your campaigns or ad groups not using targeting audiences, you can add observation audiences to all of those. And and add your YouTube users. The very first step of what I like to do in a lot of accounts is to create an audience off of anyone who's viewed any video and max that cookie out at 540 days. I'll then add that user audience to every applicable campaign. Again, we need a thousand users. And then I could see, did viewing my video have some sort of impact on that step along the way to an eventual conversion? So in this example, this particular client does not do a ton of YouTube advertising or even organic video creation, but they do some and they get decent amount of exposure for as little effort as they're doing. Next to filter, just like with an audience manager, I can sort just by the YouTube user audience type. So we're only looking at YouTube user audiences. And if I'm comparing initially, click the rate on these audiences averages just over 15% compared to the search network average of 5.98%. So people who engage with my videos in a variety of ways engage a lot better with my text ads than all other audiences. And then if we look at conversions, we haven't gotten a ton from anyone who has viewed a previous video. But when they do, the CPA is $25.57 compared to the search campaign average of $60.36. So users who engage with my YouTube videos in some way also convert cheaper in addition to being more engaged. So maybe this may give me some signals of, hey, video does help the user along the way, whether it's building awareness, having them be familiar with your brand name when they see it in search results, possibly for non-branded keywords. And then you'll be able to make those connections to see how it can help the user's consideration when not only clicking on your ad, but also eventually converting. So now you can see how you can go into the YouTube ads audience manager and create your own YouTube remarketing list from users who have engaged or viewed your videos from your channel. Your strategy is most likely going to change depending on what creative you have, how large you can get some of these YouTube user audiences, and then what message you may want to show that user next. But now you have all the information you need to start coming up with your own strategies using YouTube user audience lists. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.